Okay, so um, next speaker is Ben Chan Lee from uh, Pennsylvania State University. He's going to tell us about reflection maps associated with evolutions, factorization problems, and uh, Poisson geometry. Okay. Uh, thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so let me begin the talk by saying that, uh, yeah, this is a talk on uh, soliton boundary interactions in inequitable multi-component uh, soliton equations and the mathematics that goes out in this study. So we're going to use the n Menakov system uh, as our primary example. Uh, n Menakov, of course, is also known as uh, vector NLS. So let me give the outline of the talk. Uh, so in the first part, I'm going to explain the origin of the problem, uh, which will provide some background uh, of the material which I'm going to talk about. Uh, second part, I'm going to talk about the reflection map at the level of projectors. Uh, so in this part, we're going to meet uh, factorization problems of this kind. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have something given. So G alpha uh, comma P is given, uh, and the problem is to find the factors on the right-hand side. So, um, so in this equation, G alpha P is this loop uh, given by identity plus this uh, scalar factor multiplied by this capital P. So capital P is a Hermitian projector. So notice that uh, this loop has a pole at alpha conjugate. And you can also check that uh, there's a zero at alpha. Okay, so I have this kind of factorization problem. And uh, so the projector P is a Hermitian pro uh, projector. And uh, so the sigma here is a uh, is an evolution uh, obeying some additional properties, which I'm going to talk about. Uh, so in the third part, in the third part, I'm going to discuss a special case, uh, the rank one case. Uh, so this is the case in which the capital P is of rank one. Uh, so here there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the capital P and uh, uh, the square bracket of small p. So square bracket of small p. Uh, so small p is just a non zero vector and the uh, bracket small p is just in, in the uh, complex projective space, uh, CPN minus one. So, uh, so in particular, uh, this small p can be the uh, say polarization vector of a one solid time solution uh, of the uh, the element of the equation. Okay, so the last part is uh, reflection maps on Poisson groups. Uh, so here we can uh, obtain an abstract result. And this abstract result in particular applies to a loop group, which we denote by k -Y. Uh So k is something but the set of all rational matrix function G, uh, satisfying a normalization condition that infinity and uh, obeying this generalized unitarity condition. Okay, so let me begin with the uh, uh, part one. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so the story begins with uh, the work with uh, Vincent and uh, his former student, one of his former students, uh, Jim. Uh, so in which they consider the n Menakov system on the half line. Uh, so here, the n Menakov system, of course, is just a uh, set of coupled uh, NLS equations. So the unknown Q here is a vector in CN and of length equal to one. Uh, uh, sorry, just a vector, just a vector in CN. Okay, so uh, Victor and Jerome consider the n Menakov system on the half line with either the Robin boundary condition at x equal to zero or the mixed Dirichlet Neumann boundary conditions. And uh, this is parameterized by a subset, which I denote by S. So S is a subset of a set of integers from one to N. And so the convention here is that uh, the J component of Q at zero, x equal to zero is equal to zero if J belongs to S. And, uh, Q sub J obeys the Neumann condition when J does not belong to S. Uh, of course, the boundary, these boundary conditions are not arbitrary, but uh, they were shown by the authors that a nonlinear mirror image method can be used 
to construct an inverse spectral transform, inverse scattering transform for the half line problem in terms of that for the full line problem. Okay, so in the special context of the n manifold system, one can obtain uh, an n soliton solution of the half line problem with the above boundary conditions as the restriction to x bigger than zero of a 2n soliton solution of the full line problem. Uh, provided that the normal constants and the discrete eigenvalue satisfy appropriate mirror symmetry conditions. Uh, so in particular, the collision of a one soliton with boundary at x equals zero will become the collision of a one soliton with this mirror soliton. Okay, so let's begin by looking at the full line problem. Uh, so here, uh, a one soliton solution is of this form. Uh, so Q is given by some scalar factor multiplied by this uh, vector P. So P is in Cn and uh, the length of P is in one. Uh, so this P is the unit polarization vector, which is in an internal degree of freedom uh, for this kind of multi-component uh, equations. Uh, notice that we can alternatively think of P as a vector on the odd dimensional sphere S two n minus one. So I will say some more thing, uh, some more comment on this uh, later on. Okay, so now let's come to the n soliton solution of the n manifold system on the line. Uh, so here we are not really concerned about the complicated expression uh, for the. Uh, and soliton solution. What we're interested in is the asymptotic behavior. So here, when t goes to plus or minus infinity, uh, it's known that we can, uh, the n soliton solution behaves like a superposition of a uh, train of uh, one solitons. Uh, so here, the pj plus or minus are uh, the asymptotic unit polarization vectors, and q sub j is just some scalar value function. Uh, depending on parameters, which I call uh, uj and vj. Okay, now, so here I have to mention uh, two works. So here, uh, that's a work of Eberwitz, Denari, and Chubach, and independently by uh, Suchita. So what it shows is that the map that sends the pi minus to the pi plus can be factorized in the succession of uh, two body collision maps. <laughs> Uh, which I'm denoting by R2 to the alpha 1, alpha 2 in this equation 2. So this two-body collision uh, map uh, takes P1 minus P2 minus to P1 plus, P2 plus, and alpha J, which is this combination of UJ and VJ, uh, related to the eigenvalues. Actually, they're the eigenvalues of the Lex operator. Okay, so uh, as a remark here, uh, this two-body collision map can be computed using universe scattering transform, or alternatively, can also be obtained by refactorizing problems up to a phase factor. Okay, but for our purpose, we're not really concerned with our with the phase factor. So because eventually we're going to go into complex projected space. Okay, so uh, the important thing here is that uh, this factorization is consistent, is due to the fact that uh, the Yang Baxter equation, which is the equation in the, uh, yeah, in this equation four, is satisfied for generic choice of alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, of the real axis. Uh, we're going to call R2 to the alpha one, alpha two, the parametric Yang Baxter map, uh, following the terminology of uh, Baxter law. Okay, so now let's consider a one soliton solution of the half line problem. Uh, so, as I remarked earlier, uh, this can be obtained from a two soliton solution on the full line. And uh, we're going to focus our attention on the uh, case in which we have mixed durationally non boundary conditions because uh, the Robin condition is actually not interesting. Okay, so to cut the story short, uh, because of the mirror symmetry, the two-body collision map is given by this map, which I call R tilde, uh, tau of alpha alpha here. So in other words, um, 
there's a relationship connecting upper one and upper two. Uh, also, uh, the first component and uh, the second component of the input are also related. Okay, so here, uh, the matrix I sub S, that's just a diagonal matrix in which uh, the DI is equal to one if I belongs to S, and DI is equal to minus one if I does not belong to S. Uh, so, um, okay, so, um, well, because I sub S times P plus up to the scalar factor is the polarization of the solid part after refraction from the boundary X to zero. So uh, define this map B tilde of alpha takes the equivalent task containing P minus to the equivalent task containing I sub S times P plus. Okay, so this map, uh, Winston and uh, Jern by direct calculation shows that uh, this is a reflection map. Uh, which means that uh, the following parametric reflection equation is satisfied for generic choice of alpha i. Okay, so this is the equation seven. This is the reflection equation. So this is the map, uh, the kind of map that we, we're going to discuss. Okay, so um, yeah, so the implication of the parametric reflection equation is the following. Uh, the yen factor equation, of course, tells us that the n solid part collision process can be factorized into a succession of two body collisions. And so, analogously, the factory equation tells us that solid part boundary interaction also has this kind of factorization property. Okay, so uh, one of the questions that motivates this study is this. Uh, so we know that n Menachov is a Hamiltonian system. So it's natural to ask, does the parametric reflection map or uh, parametric yang factor map have some Poisson properties? Okay, so, well, <laughs> turns out that the answer to S uh, is yes to both questions and that forms the content of these uh, two works. Okay, so let me begin with some remarks about uh, the reflection and the yang factor map. So, uh, so it turns out that uh, these two kinds of maps, they're related to each other in a more intimate way than what we initially thought. Uh, okay, and then second thing is that uh, you will see that we can construct yang factor maps, reflection maps with Poisson and synthetic properties on various kinds of geometrical objects. Uh, so first of all, we can do things on set of all n by n conditional projectors, uh, which are denoted by P of n. And then we can do things on complex projector space, CPN minus one, uh, corresponding to Renron projection uh, projectors. And then we can do things abstractly on the, at the level of Poisson groups. Uh, so in particular, for this rational group, which I uh, already mentioned, Okay, so our reflection maps are associated with refactorization problems on rational groups uh, with symmetries coming from involutions, which are also legal anti-morphisms. Uh, so that's the uh, <laughs> uh, general property. So uh, now also I mentioned another, another general one because uh, the relation between our reflection maps and the Yang-Gasson map can be, uh, uh, well, it's as follows. Refraction maps are smoothly conjugated to the composite of permutation maps with corresponding reduction of the anti maps. So I will say some more about what I mean by uh, reduction of the anti maps as I go along. Okay, so now we're getting into part two. Uh, so, uh, so G alpha P is something that I already mentioned before. So these are called the simple elements. And uh, so Karen Woodenberg showed that uh, these simple elements generate the rational group K rack. Uh, we're going to equate uh, the set of all n by n Hermitian matrices, which are denoted by HN here, with the due space of UN uh, and equip it with the Lee Poisson structure. Uh, so, and then you can check that Pn is a Poisson submanifold of this uh, H of n. And for any k between 1 and n minus 1, uh, let's introduce this P 
PNK. So PNK consists of all uh, permission projectors for which the trace is equal to K. Uh, so this condition here is equivalent to saying that the rank of P is equal to K. Okay, now then one can show that PN sub K, uh, that is a topological of, of the unitary group UN uh, through this matrix uh, E sub K, which is just a diagonal matrix consisting of zeros and ones. Uh, so uh, so that's, there exists a standard symplectic two form on this PN sub K uh, given by this uh, omega prime EK. Okay, uh, so we're going to first discuss a result on the young vector maps, which is the starting point of our journey on reflection maps. Uh, so uh, we have this factorization on which the left hand side is given. So we have G alpha one, P one, G alpha two, P two, these are given, right? And the problem is to find the factors on the right hand side. So this problem has a unique solution for P one tutor and P two tutor. If this condition in equation 10 is satisfied. And uh, so indeed for alpha one, alpha two, satisfying this assumption, uh, we can define this map R of alpha one, alpha two, uh, from Pn cross Pn to itself, and taking P1, P2 to P1 tilde, P2 tilde. Okay, so, um, Yeah, so second part of the result tells us that R of alpha one, alpha two is a parametric game vector max, uh, provided that the alpha i's obey this uh, condition. And uh, so, uh, so in other words, the uh, Yang, this Yang vector equation is satisfied. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, now let's also introduce an annotation. Let's denote by R, K, and L to be the restriction of the map R alpha one, alpha two to PNK cross PNL. Okay, and then we're going to equip uh, PNK cross PNL with the synthetic two form in equation 14. Uh, so I call that omega prime alpha one K alpha two L. Uh, so when we equate this product with that simplex two form, this map R K L alpha one alpha two is a simplex morphism. So it preserves the two form. Uh, so in order to construct reflection maps, uh, let U be a Hermitian matrix in U n. Uh, so uh, a Hermitian matrix in U n can be factorized into this form. Uh, so U is B times I sub S times B star for some choice of S and for some choice of V in the unitary group UN. So that's the relationship uh, connecting this U with uh, the I sub S that we talked about in the beginning. Okay, so define the map sigma. So uh, this is from KRAC to KRAC uh, using this formula in equation 15. So we evaluate G at tau of C. Uh, tau of C is just taking the conjugate of C and multiplied by minus one and then conjugate by U. So that's the map uh, sigma. So this sigma is an evolution, is also a lead group anti morphism Okay, so in this case, remember that uh, in the outline, I mentioned this factorization problem in uh, equation 16. And so, uh, so in particular, because of uh, the nature of sigma, this induces a map on the uh, uh, the parameters uh, parameter space cross uh, several Hermitian projectors. So we have this map here. And then the first result we obtain is the following. So in the first part, it's just existence of solution, unique solution of the factorization problem, uh, provided that the alpha is off the view line and also off the imaginary axis. Okay, so in the second part, uh, we define the uh, yeah define the map B in this way. We take alpha comma P to uh, tau of alpha uh, C U sub K P to tilde. So C U sub K 
is defined in equation 17. It's just conjugation by unit. Uh, so this map is a parametric refraction map. So in other words, it satisfies the uh, uh, refraction equation. So it is, this is equation 20. Uh, provided that alpha one and alpha two obey these conditions in equation uh, 21. Okay, so um, okay, so in order to study the uh, symmetric property of the map B filter, uh, we're going to consider reduction of the map R K K half alpha alpha. So in other words, we're going to put uh, K to L. Okay, so we want to restrict the map R K K to the graph of the map C U comma K. Okay, so this map. Uh, we're going to denote by alpha, alpha k, uh, tau alpha alpha. So it goes from the graph of CUK to itself. Um, okay, so of course this map is characterized by this condition. Uh, iota k is just an inclusion map. Okay, so, uh, so actually let me go back to the previous slide. So now we, what we're going to do is to uh, Take the two forms, the simple two form on the graph. And uh, so we're going to put that. No, actually, take a, yeah, take the simple two form on PNK cross PNK. We're going to pull that back to the graph uh, GUK. And so remember that, uh, yeah, in this case, alpha and tau alpha, they have the same imaginary part, right? So because of that, in the next slide, you don't really see this uh, scaling factor. So you just pull back omega prime UK plus omega prime UK. So because that's, that scalar factor comes up. Uh, so pull that back, uh, equip the GUK with the simplex two form omega K. Uh, then uh, this map R hat K tau of alpha alpha is a simplex homomorphism when domain and co-domain are equipped with this omega K. Uh, second part, um, yeah, gives the relationship between uh, the map B alpha and the reduction of, uh, yeah, reduction of alpha K tau alpha alpha. So this is uh, the relationship uh, in this case, in this particular case. Okay, so you see it's just conjugation. You can just conjugate S composer alpha K uh, by CUK identity map of PNK inverse. Okay, so this map, because of this relation, is also a uh, symplectic morphism uh, when we equip PNK with the symplectic two form omega prime EK. Okay, so uh, let me see if I keep time. So the rank one K basically just, uh, yeah, basically it's just. Uh, uh, transporting the results in part one <laughs> to this particular case, right? And so, uh, so uh, we're going to replace a p in S two n minus one by uh, the bracket of p in complex projective space uh, because S two n minus one, being all dimensional, has no symplectic structure, right? Uh, so the bridge connecting p n one and this complex projective space is given by this map, which I call J. So just send the equivalence class containing P to the corresponding projection, corresponding projector. Okay, then we can pull back everything uh, <laughs> using, using uh, maps related to this J. Okay, so, um, so again, let me start with the result from L. So first part, if I pull back omega prime E1, Using the uh, using the map J, uh, the result is a Fubini study two form, which is very well known. Uh, yeah, then I conjugate R one one, alpha one, alpha two by the inverse of J cross J, and uh, so this is the symplectic morphism from the product of CPN minus one with itself uh, to itself, and uh, when it's equipped with this uh, two form in equation seventy five. Okay, so this is a uh, this is again back to map. Okay, so again, uh, we have to to consider the uh, refraction map. You have to we have to do a reduction, right? Uh, so here, uh, yeah, I'm showing the reduction in equation twenty eight. 
So uh, we have this map, I'll have one tau alpha alpha from part two. So we conjugate that by this J cross J R inverse. So J cross I J R is given by equation 27. Okay, so this R to the tau of alpha alpha is straight to G to the inverse of the same. Uh, yeah, when the graph uh, G U to the is equipped uh, with this product <coughs> in fact form. Okay, uh, so again, you see in equation 30, uh, we define this B tutor uh, by conjugating with B. And uh, so one can show that uh, this B tutor of alpha uh, is a parametric reflection map in the sense that it obeys equation 31. Okay, and then finally, with B tutor of alpha from CPN minus one to CPN minus one, is a symmetrical morphism when we equip the complex projective space with the Fubini study to form omega fx. Okay, so uh, yeah, let me see how much time we have. Uh, yeah, let me let me go through this point very quickly, right? So uh, this is actually the most technical part. So. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, so let me just show some of the main points, right? So uh, here we can actually prove an abstract theorem. We have to make certain assumptions. So here, first assumption is that uh, there exists a left partial reaction of G, which I call C, and a right partial reaction, which I call eta. So uh, you can just take these to be actions if you want, <laughs> right? Because uh, so, and then you can replace a G star G over there by G cross G. Okay, which will simplify everything. Uh, so the main one of the main things is that uh, you have to assume that the two actions are compatible in the sense that you have this equation 34. Given g comma h in g star g, you can factorize in a unique way uh, using the two partial actions. Okay, and then there are various assumptions on domain. Um, okay, now then I define the reflection map uh, R. Uh, using equation 48. And then, uh, so um, this R defined in that way is a young factor map. So uh, this doesn't depend on parameters, right? But actually the ones containing parameters is a special case of this. Uh, you can deduce that from this. Okay, uh, and then R is a Poisson diffeomorphism when the open submanifold G star G is equipped with the structure induced from G cross G equipped with the um, public structure. So, um, yeah, okay, so this is the way to define the reflection map is in uh, this equation 46. So uh, we have a sigma here. The sigma here is a Poisson, Poisson information. Uh, which is also a uh, the algebra morphism. Okay, so we have to use some method which we call the reduction that appeared in one of my early work. Okay, so this is a bit. Right? <laughs> Uh, there's the image of some classical uh, equation, but there is the alpha experiment of uh, equation that says line that line is more constant. Yeah, this is for, uh, we're talking about set theoretic solution. Yeah, that's the equation. Our original the the equation comes out in the context of, say, quantum groups, right. study of quantum group systems, right? And such R are defined of V tends to be and V is. Now here, the, uh, our domain can be different geometrical objects, right? You can see that uh, we have uh, domains can be PN plus PN, right? Can be, uh, say, plus some group, right? right. So, uh, yeah. I'm also wondering whether it means that as you call it, can you not call it? Maybe it's fine. Well, the classical analog, of course, is a very good I mean, classical. I mean, the yeah. equation, right? You yeah. take a sign plus in that 
I mean, for the front of things, right? Yeah. So we're dealing with that theoretic solution. This is about one of the questions that Frank have asked in the early right, right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, it's kind of the beauty of solitude. It's like they're asking for what they think. Yeah, they yeah, 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 are part of it. Sorry. <laughs> 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 okay, so maybe, uh, well, to keep the time, uh, let's take uh, the chat again.